disappeared from the news, more or less, is uh, Lesbos in Greece. And I want to bring in Effie Elatsudi at this point, because we do have here two um, things you have in common with uh, the Lebanon, it's, uh, one, or with Syria as well. This is uh, the uh, missing coverage uh, of what is going on, actually. And the second thing is the missing political will, I believe, um, to change anything on the situation of uh, refugees on Lesbos. Now, on Lesbos, we um, have a more um, uh, dynamic uh, picture of uh, refugees. Um, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the actual uh, the situation today on Lesbos and what um, you are doing with uh, with Lesbos Solidarity to help them. Where to start? Uh, what is the situation? The first thing, and I think the most important, is uh, as if the Lesbos is not anymore um, a place of arrival. Uh, on the media, it's not an important place, and still people are arriving, and still people are suffering here. Uh, we have, after the fire in uh, Moria in 2020, that uh, Moria was uh, known as a horrible place and as a cemetery of human rights for years, we have the creation of another camp uh, where the conditions are really horrible. Um, we saw people in uh, tents for years, uh, uh, tents coming down with the wind and the rain, Today, and we are talking, we were talking about thousands of people. Today, we have less uh, refugees on Lesbos. That means that uh, the conditions are a little bit better. Uh, if we are talking about toilets and showers and uh, access to basic, um, basic needs. But the political situation is much, much worse, which means that uh, we have systematic pushbacks in the Aegean. That means that the people that uh, most of the people that are trying to arrive, they cannot arrive because they are stopped in the sea or sent back from the land with uh, a small boats and with illegal operation to the other side. It's like a ping pong between the border. And it's becoming more and more dangerous because the, now the uh, you know refugees are used as a tool, and we are talking also about children and uh, very young uh, people, and that means uh, that these people are traumatized forever. Once again, uh, it's a it's a victory and it's celebrated by our government. Uh, um, it's not they don't openly admit that they do pushback because it's illegal according to international law, but they say they protect and they control our border. With I mean, and that's really very very problematic. They don't have a status. They don't know what will be their future. Imagine the kids that are uh, growing up in this situation. Without also the government being able to send them back, that's very good, but still it's a, it's a trap. It's a kind of trap for them. And I also know that more and more people, they come here and they say, uh, we, where are the human rights? Where is Europe? why we are not protected uh, and when are we going to be supported and safe and that's very serious and many of course people they say that if i knew that i would have uh, this situation i i would prefer prepare, prefer to die to die in, i mean in my country uh, instead of this uh, mess here and that's very hard because we know what they they go through we know that they were forced to flee. They didn't come for uh, vacations to do it. So uh, how is the situation um, from the children of on Lesbos right now? Do, you, do they have the chance to get education? We are doing uh, support outside the camp. We are supporting families and we have educational activities outside the camp. We are expecting the government to reply. It's very difficult to bring the kids in the school. At the same time, they are preparing a new camp in the middle of the mountain, 30 kilometers from the city, which means that practically the access to the public school will be impossible. We believe that this, all the kids need to have access to, to education. And it's very, it's, it's uh, st not strange, you all experience this, that Ukrainian refugees, they have immediately access to, uh, as in many rights, which is very good, but let's 
use these examples that we can offer this. I, I hope that this, this will really be used as an example. This will be a proof that we can do better with the refugees. But for the moment, what they do is a huge discrimination. These are real refugees, these are people coming from a real war, and we forget all the other people. And they come by buses, uh, they are welcomed, uh, they, are, they have access to rights, which is, I think, for all. It should be for all. Florian Grigotzik, um, you're a journalist, uh, you are um, keeping up with the current situation as well in your uh, job. Um, now, the Ukrainian um, uh, refugees do have uh, more access to the system than other refugees, which is absolutely um, good, and we want to, to have this no other way. But uh, why um, is the government doing um, such a bad job uh, to to offer the same? I mean, I, I don't know what the government uh, is doing, what the government is doing. Um, but if I had to take a guess, I think that uh, the Ukrainians at the moment have a huge lobby. Um, every second uh, profile picture on social media is in uh, blue and yellow. And um, a lot of organizations, a lot of uh, even like brands um, have their logos in Ukrainian colors and I think it's kind of the sentiment that we've seen 2014 and 15 in Germany you know everyone is happy to help and I think that's a good thing but I think the Syrians do not have um, a lobby actually that's that's my point of view I mean there are a lot of people working very very hard um, but it's very hard also to um, to get the public's attention because people have been tired by the corona crisis that's still ongoing and then the ukrainian war and then if you want to um, bring attention to the syrian issue um, then it goes on top of that and i think people are tired at the moment of of uh of war of news and um, we can see that when we watch watch the numbers um, you can see that in the beginning of the ukrainian uh, of the of the attack of russia on ukraine you could see the numbers spike uh, there was a lot of attention for media in general for journalism and then it went downhill from there um. if i can add um, something on top of that i'd say that looking at syrians um, and back to 2015 2016 Back then, Syrians were the good refugees, and we had the Syrians who were the good refugees because they were very quickly granted asylum generally in Germany. And um, the situation now has totally flipped. And I think this is a political discussion, of course, and a decision, of course, because of um, the special situation of Ukraine and the, the feeling of being targeted ourselves in our European democratic lifestyle. Um, there is a principle of fundamental human rights for everyone. And this doesn't differ, differ whether you're a Ukrainian or Syrian. So if you're a Ukrainian refugee, of course you have rights. And if you're a Syrian refugees, refugee, of course you have rights. And these rights should be equal. And I mean, the question is, why aren't European youth leaders stepping up in a similar way as they did with the war on Ukraine and say that we now have to use all of our political leverage to find a solution for the Syrian case, for the millions of Syrians in Jordan, in Lebanon, in Turkey, to be able to return, but also for Syrians in, in Europe to return. And this is something that is really missing, and is missing in the Syrian case since 10 years now, 11 years now. And that's sad. That's really, really sad and disappointing. Thank you for your, for your input, and Florian want to uh, reply on it. I mean, this kind of feeling of being stuck in the limbo uh, was exactly what I was uh, witnessing in, in Lebanon uh, almost three years ago. So, so is it still the same for the people? Uh, yes, the people are still feeling stuck because um, they don't want to return to Syria. The everyday situation in Lebanon is much terrible than in 2019, because there is an, a huge economic crisis. And so it's really terrible. So the price of bread, of fuel, of oil, etc., is hitting the most 
vulnerable people, but also you have people who came to Lebanon since 10 years and who made a living here. And even though they are now in an economic crisis, they prefer to stay here than to go back to uh, Syria. Uh, we are living in, uh, in a very specific uh, uh, um, uh, history time. So some of the Syrians want to stay, some of them want to go back. Today, when I work with Alpha and when Hanadi work with Dhamma, it is not because we want to find a solution only. We want to prepare these young people, these children, these adolescents to face this limbo reality, to give them more skills, to be more uh, creative, to come to terms with their past, to understand what they are doing now, and to imagine a future of themselves. If we arrive if we reach this goal, uh, this uh, generation will not be lost. So it is uh, our small contribution. I want to address this uh, to Hanadi. Uh, sorry, uh, Marie Claude, um, because we um, we talked a lot yet about refugees, and I want to know from Hanadi Alush how do how does this make feel you as a refugee when you follow this discussion we do have here what are your insights for us uh, first of all i'm very sad for this uh, discussion because uh, we are uh, not uh, uh, not want to mm -hmm. stay here uh, we want to travel uh, our country but the reasons uh, uh, it's not suitable for us because we uh, we suffer from the war. Um, I have a uh, bomb uh, during the war, so uh, I can't uh, I can't re remember this uh, memory. Uh, this war uh, this uh, war uh, memory it's uh, damaged our uh, our uh, thoughts, our uh, future. Uh, so I'm uh, I'm sorry for <laughs> for telling you this. The situation on Lesbos is a little bit different. Uh, I, I believe uh, the refugees on Lesbos have no chance to work or no chance to uh, make a future for themselves. Um, maybe you can give us a little bit insights. How do they cope? How do the children cope with this situation? Uh, do we have here lost generation in the midst of Europe? Exactly like that. Uh, there are efforts to have uh, access, the kids to have access to school, but there is no system to support them. And this is very, very problematic. And uh, the other thing is that, I uh, guess, the people who are getting the status of uh, the, the refugee status, they can work, but now there are less and less people that they get it. Uh, most people are rejected. We need to think about protection. I mean, we need to think of, of basic human rights. We need to think also about future. And we have the possibility to, to do better. We can do it. But I know that the difficulties in Lebanon, in Syria, in the border area. But here, supposedly, which is not the case, we could do better. And because we, are, we were talking about good and bad refugees, and to give a positive uh, example, when the refugees from Syria were arriving in 2015, the international movement of solidarity made us all proud and we saved lives all together. For the end of this discussion, I would like to ask Hanari Alush uh, again, what is it um, you wish for, for your child? أتمنى تكون حياة مختلفة عن الحياة اللي عشناها نحنا وعن الطفولة اللي عشناها حياة فيها سلام فيها فيها أمان بتمنى إنه ما يعيش تجربة أطفال سوريا ولا تجربة أطفال أوكرانيا اللي أكيد عم تأثر على على نفسية الأطفال اللي موجودين هون كمان فالتجربة عم تتكرر فبتمنى لهم حياة تكون أفضل تكون كلها سلام وأمان أفضل شيء صار بال بلبنان معي أنا إني قدرت كمل دراستي ففرص الأطفال هي أفضل شيء إنه يكون تعليم مستمر continuous education for the future حتى لو طفلي بتمنى له حياة تكون جيدة من حيث التعليم نوعية التعليم 
الفرص وبالتالي مبدئيا هي محدوده بسبب وجود المنظمات والبرامج اللي عم تتقدم من خلال المنظمات المحليه والدوليه لكن بغياب هيدي الفرص اكيد ما رح يكون له فرص انه يكمل تعليمه ويستمر بالمستقبل الجاي ثانك يو for uh, this input. I want to thank you all for this um, discussion. It was a very uh, interesting discussion. Um, I think uh, we take with us that there's still much to discuss and we probably could discuss much uh, more hours about this topic. Uh, we, should be, we should be loud about human rights and we should be strong as a civil society altogether. Um, and I think we should be aware about these uh, potential lost uh, generation, um, which we need to protect uh, the youngest, the children and the uprisings, so they have a good future. And uh, stay safe and uh, keep up the good work. And we hope that we can better this place a little bit. Thank you.